Howdy! Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. This is your home to learn how to play on the guitar, the mandolin, or the banjo. Um, I've had lots of requests to teach flat or uh, cross picking patterns and to do a guitar version of I Am a Pilgrim. My banjo version was a big hit. People said, we've got to have a guitar version. So I'm going to do that for you. But um, I really want to use this lesson not only to learn a version of I Am a Pilgrim, um, but I want those of you who have never cross-picked your whole life and you're maybe even kind of scared of that word, we're going to erase that from your memory, okay? We're going to do some cross-picking that you can do. I promise. We're going to do it slowly, okay? So if you're watching this on YouTube here in a while, I'll ask you to jump over to my website, banjobenclark.com, where you can become a Gold Pick member, where so many of you have. Thank you so much. You're the reason why I can put out videos like this each and every week. Uh, thank you very much. But you can go there, download the tab. I've got it in both a PDF and a TEF file form. Um, and it's got all the pick strokes on it, everything. This is a very straightforward version, but we work on both forward rolls, we work on forward reverse rolls, and then reverse rolls as well. So I'm going to play the song for you now, and then we're going to teach you each and every measure very slowly. Then I have another video there on the website where we do it from the top to the bottom. Um, all at once, just very, very slowly, so you can play along with me. And I've got some rhythm track videos, like three or four different speeds of me backing you up so that you can um, be a master at this song. Let's check it out. I'm a pilgrim. Okay, I am a pilgrim. We're going to concentrate mainly on some cross picking patterns here. The main cross picking pattern that I use is more of a forward roll. So we're going to take three strings, uh, various strings with various chord uh, positions, and we're going to roll through those and learn how to do those uh, with correct pick strokes. On the very end, I actually switched it up just to give you a little bit of practice on some backwards. Uh, roll. So we'll get to that. Um, it's good to be um, fluent in both forwards and backwards and that's what I like about this version it's going to work both of them out uh, pretty well we're going to kick the song off there in measure one we're playing out of the key of G um, since I'm listening to this in the basic category of the site I didn't put any hammer-ons any slides any pull-offs we're just going to concentrate on right hand coordination with left hand coordination okay um, the main thing I want to mention is that the most important thing in this whole version is your pick stroke direction. And you see those arrows there beneath each one of those notes. If it's point, the triangle is pointing down, we're going to do a down stroke, okay? So that very first note on the kickoff is a down stroke. And really that's just a G lick, okay? Normally I would hammer on or slide that right there, but we're not going to do any of those in this version. Uh, just because we want to concentrate, like I said, on pick strokes and on the cross picking technique. Um, now, we do uh, swing this song a little bit. It's going a little slower, so you'll notice whenever I performed it, we. Okay? Um, you could play it straight as well, which would sound like this. But usually this song has kind of that swingy feel, that weighted beat feel. And that's the way we're going to do it. You don't want to get in a habit to where you do that um, in everything that you play, but this is a good song to do that with. Uh, the very first measure, um, we starts off with that quarter note. One and, gets a full beat. I like to count through all of my stuff. Two. is pretty simple. One and two and three and four and one. 
measure two, we're gonna finally, we're gonna arrive at our first melody note, okay? And what we're gonna do while we're cross picking, as you could probably tell when I played it, is I'm going to actually accent my melody notes. If that's my melody note and we're cross picking through it, every time I, co I come through that note, I'm gonna make it a little louder. You hear how I do that? Those other notes are a little bit softer. Um, but we have a quarter note there to start measure two. And we're going to get in this kind of uh, partial D position. We've got our middle finger on the second fret there on the G string, our ring finger on the third fret of the B string, and we're going to come back down to our open D string, and we're going to start with a down stroke. And we're going to go down, up, down. You do that? Down, up, down. There you go. Now, you'll notice that the second half of measure two has another one of those rolls. But this is the key to cross picking, at least whenever you're using true alternating pick strokes, is that we're going to um, switch up our pick strokes when we go through the next roll, okay? So the first roll is down, up, down, and then we're gonna come back for an up stroke on this open D string. That's just gonna take a little while to get used to. It's just something that I sat around and practiced and practiced. And it's just going to take a little while to get used to, but you can do it. I promise you. The main thing is just to not get tense in our wrist. Um, if you plant, that's okay. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But make sure that you're not planting so hard that it's, that it's freezing your hand up. It needs to be really free so that you can get this cross picking going on. So that measure two sounds like this. Ready, go. One and two and three and four and. Good job. Measure three. We're going to keep that roll going one more time. Then we're going to break that roll there and come backwards on that fourth note to, to transition um, our melody notes. So measure three sounds like this. And if you'll notice, I made that part a little bit louder than the cross picking part because like I said, we want, it, uh, we want our melody to kind of stick out. So let me just play, just to give you an example of the dynamics, um, measures one through three. You see what's happening there? And it really sticks out when you're going faster. At this point, measure four, we're going to use that first quarter note, open G string, measure four, to get into a different position. We're going to use our ring finger to go to the fifth fret of the D string, which is going to make it a G note as well. Okay, and we're going to take our index and go to the third fret of the B string. Now the key here is that after you play that first open G string, in four, measure four, try not to mute that whenever you're going to, with your ring finger to get on that fifth fret. We want it to keep ringing. You hear that? Instead of, we don't want that. And then we have two rolls. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Going into measure five, we're gonna see that same pattern, but our left hand's gonna start changing because we're gonna be rotating into a C chord. So we're gonna keep the pattern going, but we're gonna release our index finger. As you'll see there, we just have open B string. Then I'm gonna do the same pattern, but I'm going to now play the third fret on the D string. This time we're starting with an up stroke. And then this is one of those transition times where my melody is going to get a little louder. Moving into measure six. Okay, so measure five slowly sounds like this. Good job. Measure six, just a bunch, of, we actually have six into seven, is three forward rolls in a row. Measure seven, coming back. And now we've got another transition period so our volume can grow. Into measure eight where we're familiar with that chord position there. 
and then we're going to get ready um, to start some backwards rolls and stuff as we move into um, measure 9 and 10. Let's check that out. 